Hello and welcome back to the Sacred Light Collective Podcast. You are with Ali and I am delighted to have you here for another episode. As I sat down to record, dear friends, I was reflecting over the week that has been and how differently um, I'm sitting from a week ago and, and how different the energy is and and just again reflecting on how quickly, how rapidly things are changing and expanding and growing and evolving and how every week feels like a year has passed because so much has happened, but it really has just been the blink of an eye and the blink of an eye. And it is such a cool experience for me that I've lent into using this space to share what's coming through each week because I'm really loving this this journey and and it feels like a chronicle of of sharing through this journey and having this not just for myself as a reference point but to hopefully be supporting you or inspiring you or just giving you you know a little seed here and there of what is maybe occurring for you or just supporting you to not feel so alone on this ascension journey and I think to also kind of bring some to bring some lightness and perhaps this this energy of normalizing the ups and downs of the journey and how that we don't need to get lost in the swing, either up or down, and we can just move with that flow. I think that that has been something that has come through a lot for me from sharing my journey is just this con- this contraction expansion or the ebb and the flow as we've been tapping into and sharing through these last few episodes and really noticing how we don't have to well I haven't got pulled into it um, as I would have in the in the past and while last week felt really heavy and felt really intensive and I will be honest in reflection it felt like uh, one of those times that people refer to as a dark night of the soul and and that is really here because we are rapidly accelerating and growing. And, and I know a lot of you were, you know, reaching out and sharing how you were feeling very much the same. And so what I wanted to share is what's come through a lot for me this week as I share my my personal experiences and those that I've felt therefore reflected in when I've been working with people or talking with people um, as what's rippling into the collective as well. And you know, we're really moving into this time as we start to expand and receive more of our higher consciousness in our in our bodies and more awareness, more awareness, right, to our higher consciousness. We're entering this time where we're also kind of shutting the door on the past. We are really learning and observing how we can really uh, move past that. We can let go or, you know, close the door, whatever the analogy kind of resonates for you because we are now seeing how we don't have to rerun those old stories, right? We don't have to be caught in the, the the program where we're powerless, where we're helpless, where we don't have the control. Um, we're coming out of the disempowerment uh, program, I guess, is what it feels like to me. And, you know, this is where that feeling of the dark night of the soul can come from because, of course, when we let go of the old or we no longer turn to the old or we close that door, we, we close the cycle, we end the cycle, we have to kind of sit in this space of even a deeper un- uncomfortableness, which is my own word and I fully claim <laughs> sitting in the uncomfortableness <laughs> and leaning into this, it can feel like a constant death and rebirth cycle because as we grow past those uh, versions of ourselves, those old versions of ourselves, it takes a time for our mind and our body to catch up to that and, you know, it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage to keep leaning in and to keep holding yourself in that uncomfortable until it starts to become more comfortable and more familiar. And, you know, friends, it's really feeling like this pivotal time where we have this capacity to really enact this empowered change within ourselves and we're coming back into a more empowered state of being. And I'm feeling that for myself, but I'm also witnessing that, you know, in, in people I'm speaking to, whether they are doing what they would consider the spiritual inner work or, or the inner work to self, or whether they are just 
discovering new new ways of approaching their triggers or new ways of seeing themselves and perspectives within themselves. People are waking up and not yet even knowing that they're waking up. And that is because we are all doing this work. And I, I, saying that, it doesn't sit right feeling like work because that makes, that gives it this heavy sense. But I think there's a joyfulness to a lightness that we can bring to this quote unquote work as we begin to transform. We are transforming at this accelerated rate, you know, healing or um, releasing or moving, you know, closing these cycles out is literally happening overnight. As we're ascending into this higher consciousness within our physical form and we're stepping into our personal power, we're able to transcend our own perceived limitations. And because we are all stepping into this, it is that ripple effect that we are all modelling aren't we? We are, we are role models. We are points of inspiration. We are beacons of light and of love for others to start to become more aware of this consciously. You know, we're not the, I'm not the same person I was last week. And I'm sure you're not the same person you were last week. Goodness, I actually am not sure I'm the same person I was two days ago at the moment. (laughs) We're all leveling up and we're all really coming into our own expanded awareness. We're coming into our power as a sovereign being. And some of the other aspects that I've noticed coming through this week is a lot of energy shifting, a lot of chakra recalibration. In fact, really our field and our frequencies recalibrating to this as well. So that is coming through and presenting in somewhat of a physical way. And you may or may not be experiencing this, but I just mention it because in a, in conversations with people and sessions with people, I have noticed um, some similarities there, some things that are coming through physically and that people are getting hung up on what it is or looking to find an external reason for why that is. And I really feel, I really feel that this is part of this recalibration because our bodies are, our bodies are also ascending. Our bodies, uh, the frequency within our bodies is also changing because as we embody more of our higher consciousness, our higher self, we are becoming more of the crystalline nature that we are. So there's a lot, particularly through the lower chakras I'm feeling, and I have been noticing a lot in my root chakra, the base chakra, and a lot of that I've been receiving for myself, and I've had kind of this some interesting feedback, particularly through one session. I love my client work because I really feel like it is this bit of a biofeedback loop where often, you know, spirit will bring through something that can clarify something that I'm feeling or working through for myself personally and just helps me helps me navigate and helps me get really clear on what's happening for me but not just me but also as uh, for us in the collective but really noticing a lot of this root chakra uh, base chakra work because we are transcending our limitations because we are closing off old programs and and old ways of being in uh, the survival element, so the way that we were always operating from this place of fear of being unsafe and clearing now to really access the earth Gaia in a new way. So anchoring more into that truth and safety within our body, within our own inner chakra system, but also in relation to the earth and to Gaia. And this is really coming through as quite a crystalline energy, a frequency. And I am seeing a lot more of our chakra energy and the energy in the body taking on more of a crystalline structure. 
And it's kind of odd because it's, I say that, and when you think of a crystal, you think of something hard, but the way it, the way it comes through, it's very malleable. It's almost like you can touch it and it rebounds back, a bit like slime, I would guess. Um, but it has these properties uh, of a, a crystalline nature. So as we're unplugging from these old grids, you know, these old programs, these old cycles, we are recalibrating to this new crystalline frequency. So rather than being anchored to the past, it's allowing us to be really anchored to the present. And I'm sure more will come through for me on that because that has really only dropped in in the last day or two before I record this episode. And I know that there's more to come there because I am receiving a lot of synchronicities around observing more crystals in our physical reality. And so there's a deeper connection there, I know, to our crystalline structure and our frequency within that. But it feels like we are receiving a lot of upgrades, new templates, particularly related to the root chakra, the base chakra energies. And you may feel somewhat up and down around that because it may kind of push a little button. You may be triggered a little bit around your sense of safety, your physical, your material needs, your groundedness, your connectedness to, to body, to self, to to survival. And that is why I wanted to share that here so that if you observe that or if you're someone that is um, attuned to the energy and can feel your chakra energy uh, shifting and, and, and tingling and pulsing, to breathe into it and to breathe into it in a way that you are releasing it down into the earth. So releasing and letting go down to the earth, allowing allowing anything that is now not in the calibration of where you are to be to be released, but also simultaneously supporting this new anchoring to the earth in this higher frequency. And I've also been experiencing and feeling a lot of upper chakra work, in particular for me, the high heart. The high heart chakra has been coming in and out for the last few months now. But I'm really understanding that more as a connection to our crystalline body, our crystalline temp template within. And it's interesting because for me it almost feels like there is a, a, a crystal or a, pe a pendant, as you would imagine, that is in the space which is between the heart chakra and the throat that, that sits there and it almost uh, feels like it act, it's the activation point. So now when I'm coming into heart work, I, instead of coming into that the traditional space of the heart chakra, that center of the chest, I feel myself coming more through the heart chakra, sorry, the high heart chakra. And what I have started to tap into there is this frequency of peace and bliss in a, a way that I don't know that I've ever consciously been aware of before. So I understand now how this opens us to a higher capacity to love, to unconditional love within us and this blissful, peaceful state that we are moving to in this higher consciousness embodiment, new earth frequency, one where we are embodied beings, sovereign beings, full of love and compassion and grace for ourselves and for our fellow, our fellow humans, our fellow uh, sovereign beings, our, our, the humanity, our collective. And also feeling a lot of crown chakra work too. So again, somewhat bringing in these new frequencies, calibrating the integration so just inviting you, if you're noticing any pressure around your head or tingling or headaches, to take some breaths and just allow your crown to open, visualize a flower and allowing that to, to open and to receive and to allow this to move straight through you. 
there seems to be some significance with uh, the crown, the root, the base chakra and the high heart for me over this last week. And so I just wanted to share that as well in case that's something that you are noticing or you may notice over the coming week. So there's been some physical kind of anxiety at times, um, feeling maybe a little agitated or frustrated or just feeling slightly out of sorts. And I'm not the only one that has has felt that way. And it like comes and goes. It's really interesting. And I, I have, to be honest, I've not really paid it a lot of attention. I've just observed it because it feels like it's been part of this process of allowing the uncomfortable of the new to become comfortable. An analogy that I use quite often when I'm talking uh, with the beautiful women that I work with is that that it's like you've bought yourself a new pair of shoes. They're a little bit tight. They're a little bit uncomfortable. You need to wear them in a little bit. You might put some socks in to stretch them out. But then one, one, t- one day you put them on and they just feel really comfortable and you are just striding ahead without any thought about your feet at all. And that's what this feels like to me. It's those moments where the shoe's rubbing a little bit on the foot or your toes are feeling a little tight in the front of the shoe uh, or your feet are aching after a, a long day of standing in a pair of high heels. It is that kind of feeling, but then it passes and then it, you, you feel comfortable. And so it hasn't, it's felt almost seamless in a way, like one day to the next, it's rolled very beautifully. And I think that if you can allow yourself to almost surf the energies, isn't it? It's like surfing the wave, uh, allowing the ebb and the flow, remembering our contraction and expansion that we have been talking a lot about and observing how there can be lots of mini contraction and expansions, or it might be a contraction that lasts for a week, an expansion that lasts for two weeks, but just allowing yourself to move in the flow. That feels really important. We've also feeling into the coming week, moving into the energy from the 99 gateway, the 99 portal of the 9th of September. And for me, what I'm feeling coming through that is this deeper connection to the crystalline templates within us, receiving more of the crystalline light codes opening to our higher ascension. And when we think about the number nine and what we know about the number nine, that is a lot of closing off. That is the ending of cycles. And we have this time to really be observant about what it is that we want to end, what we don't feel a place for for us at this time or where or where we're clearing out those patterns and the conditioning or the programs where we're ready to be done with whatever is here for us that's coming through and you know we've been talking about that over the last few episodes about what what's been coming up for me and giving you an opportunity to feel into what might be coming through for you and I can definitely feel there is a, a couple of consistent themes for myself coming through and really allowing myself to to reset and I guess it one one personal element to share around that as I touched on in the last episode is really understanding that I was chasing a dream and a goal that I had felt resonance with four or five years ago and how I realized in the here and now apart from I was a thousand times a different person than I was then that also didn't necessarily feel aligned for me now. And that wasn't actually something that brought me fulfillment and satisfaction. It didn't light my heart up. And so I've had this space over this last couple of weeks to really feel into, okay, well, let's let that go. Let's close that off and say, well, that's not a dream, a goal. That's not a a state of being that I choose, choose for myself now. And for the most part, I'm just open to the new. I don't know what is going to replace that yet. I don't know what my 
point of service is calling me to do right now. I don't know what my business is going to look like, but I know that it's not what I thought it was that I had been working towards and hammering myself towards and not not feeling the full alignment to it. And so there's the beautiful freedom of being able to let that go and to have space for the new to come through. And little did I know until I started connecting to this energy of the 99 portal and started hearing what people were sharing about their experience with what's coming into the energies that I understood that this is what needed to occur for me was to close off what I started. I think that people, uh, side note, <laughs> I think from what I'm hearing from a, a lot of other people that it might be a cycle of nine years. So it might be something that is being closed out over the last nine years. For me personally, what I'm connecting to and what's re really resonating for me is this experience, of, as I touched on in the last episode, of where I started out in my offering um in my service of, of light and love, in my service to to awakening, to ascension, to you, <laughs> where I started out with that four or five years ago is very different to what I'm actually truly feeling called to now. And I, I think that I've been having this conversation quite a bit with a number of people, even my daughter this week, about bringing some bringing bringing a normalization if that's a word bringing normalizing the ability to change to pivot to say one day this is what I'm choosing to do or this is what I'm working towards and then being in that energy and recognizing through either your growth your your expansion or because you've actually stepped into that recognize that it's not actually where you are desiring to be so making a change or pivoting or allowing it to be okay to try a hundred things before you hit the 101 that is for you and I think that sometimes we feel like we have made a choice and we get stuck with it and we st and we stick it out and we settle for it because we think that that's where we need to be and we can't change or like myself getting into this fixed mindset of how something should be based on one version of yourself and now being you know here as i said 4 to 5 years later and realizing that i'm in a de very different place i am feeling more of my embodiment of my higher consciousness and now an understanding more about the way that I'm being called to a express myself and to serve to serve as part of this great awakening and ascension so as we feel into that energy as well it, it's really coming together so beautifully and I always love the synchronicity of of the the universe of the way that source god or whatever you you connect to works spirit and how powerful it is to connect into what is true for you. What is it aligned for you? What is resonating for you? Ultimately, what is lighting you up? What is your heart singing when you hear, see, feel, do, and following that? You know, as I always say, these are my experiences, these are my opinions, this is just what I receive and what's coming through to me. It doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. And there's the the key here about embodying your power is using your discernment, is empowering, feeling empowered yourself to to choose and to know and, and to be what feels right for you. And that is the energy that I'm like, my whole body is tingling as I speak into that right now, because that's what I feel like is here. And that's what's here through the energy that's opening on the 99 gateway or portal that um, is coming through on the 9th of September is just really stepping into this power personal power it's it's stepping into the leadership within yourself and you know I'm passionate about that and I I feel sometimes like I'm saying the same thing but I know that it is what's here and I've had this conversation with some beautiful women over the last month 
and and the, the beautiful way of connecting to how we are all here sharing the same word we are sharing the same mission and purpose and it's our individual expression and how we're bringing that through and often we're doing that you know jointly we are co-creating with each other to share the same message and the same word and I think that it is there's something just that really lights me up that really lights me up that we are all coming together as one and we are bringing that individual expression together and sometimes we don't see that and it's interesting to reflect on these points with people that you're connecting with and you may not be doing that in a particularly overt way but notice what's happening in your workplace or your relationships uh, the connections with other people notice how things are shifting and maybe maybe that you are sharing in something that is so much deeper than just what's sitting on the surface and how we are connecting more freely and more easily with this idea of uh, being expressions of love, of beauty, of grace, of pleasure, of joy, and how we are all co-creating this beautiful unity consciousness and bringing the grace back to our human experience. So I just want to recap as we come to the end of this episode to observe how your body is feeling, to observe how your energy is feeling. If if you are an energy worker, if you're sensitive to the energies, if you're an empath, then feel into those, those energies, feel into what's there for you, allowing yourself to, to be open to bringing up any repeated patterns, programs, uh, triggers, bringing that up and seeing if perhaps you feel ready to close that out, to let go of that version of you that is connected to whatever that is, to allow yourself to move really gently and softly with the body. It might be that you nourish yourself, you get extra rest because, boy, this week I've been feeling really tired. I have been going to bed so early, like 8, 8.30. I've been going to bed in the evening and I have been sleeping so deeply, more deeply than I have in a really long time. I still have been having really vivid dreams, but not ones that are waking me up. It, it feels like a lot of healing is taking place in the dream state. Maybe you've noticed that as well, but I am finding that mid-afternoon slump, but in a different way, this feels very different and, and it is about really supporting your body as we integrate and we calibrate to these new frequencies, these higher frequencies. So you might even feel drawn to eat lighter foods. I have been feeling the call to drinking a lot more juices and, and ingesting things that are a bit more easily digestible. And that's not dietary advice and that's not saying to change anything you're doing, but that it's just something that my higher self has been supporting me with, my, my body has been asking for to ensure that it's able to do what it needs to do without getting caught in having to overly digest any heavy fried foods and that kind of that kind of thing but but that might be something that you feel too my appetite is certainly decreased it's like i haven't really felt like i've needed as much food eating um less meals in fact and i feel like that's all part of that and i i really you know i don't subscribe to eating a particular diet or being vegetarian or whatever it is because it's so individual and i notice with my own body that there are times i go through that i will eat less and that i will feel called to just more juices vegetables very light kind of soups and and liquid meals and then other times where i there's no thought i don't give it any thought and i just trust that my body and my higher self will just just guide me and nudge me to what I need and drink plenty of water, my friends, you know, definitely activate your water. That's something else that was coming through that 
is it's quite simple that you can just place your hands around your glass or your bottle, your container of water, and just infuse, charge it with the intention of whatever it might be for you. For me, I have been really focusing on the, the quality of the water, so activating the water so that I may receive the utmost hydration element of the water and infusing it with peace, I have had quite, quite the connection through the high heart chakra, that blissful love kind of higher state of being that I was feeling really when I lent into that felt like peace to me. And so I have been really focused on bringing in peace to my to my body, bringing peace to my cells, peace, peace to my energy as well. And, you know, there are things you can do by putting crystals in your water. You might want to write um, or stick on their words of affirmation or just things like unconditional love, peace, bliss, unity, whatever it is to infuse your intention within the water that you are drinking and getting in nature, of course, and I know I say this all of the time, but really Gaia is calling us in to, to lean into her support, to remember that, you know, she created our bodies and that she is here to support us as well. And as I shared the story last episode, um, or it might have been the episode before about feeling drawn to to a particular park that was very special to me and just being in the presence of nature, just allowing yourself to connect to that and how very, very quickly that just clears you vibrationally and it just resets and just brings in again this balance and harmony to peace, to love, to grace. So a lot of information, I know in this episode, a lot of information coming through, but it is just some of my experiences, as I've said, some of my experiences and what I've seen with other, other people through our session work and conversation, and I can feel as though there is more to come as we close out some of the old cycles. We close out and we allow ourselves to really move into this expanded state of higher consciousness in our physical bodies and we become more one within ourselves. Once again, the light, the love, the divinity within me honors the light, the love, the divinity within you. Namaste. Namaste. 